Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 94 of Photo Critiques. And in Photo Critiques, people send me in some of their best work and I critique each shot with suggestions on how they can improve it. And today, I'm pleased to critique the work of Dirk Van Dan Heuvel. I'm sorry, I totally mispronounced your name, Dirk. I apologize. Um, I gotta apologize to everyone too. I am for some reason just today I came down with a really sore throat and I hope to make it through this critique without coughing in everyone's ear well I'll cut it out if I do cut so the critique might be herky-jerky if I stop it and cut out my cough here and there so I apologize in advance for that the good thing is is there's not a lot to critique with Dirk he is awesome he's an awesome photographer Dirk I'm, I'm amazed at some of the work he sent me and I, you know, some, several of these shots I wish I took myself. And um, everyone, I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, this first one, uh, very unusual perspective. Um, we have this mirrored something here in the hole, and Dirk is shooting, you know, through the hole, obviously, to the background. And we have the mirrored um, area behind Dirk. And of course, Dirk's off to the side, so he's not in the image. It's just a brilliant shot. And partly why it's brilliant, if you look at the scene, it's not that interesting. There is not a lot going on here. This building doesn't look that interesting, and the this doesn't look overly interesting. <clears throat> but this is what I'm talking about when I say to work a scene. And Dirk did an awesome job of making the mundane something special. And it's a really, really nice shot, Dirk. And he shot it at 1 200th of a second, F9, ISO 100. Uh, this is another, you know, study of shapes. In this case, we have rectangles, and, you know, it's it's a really nice job. you got to look for this type of geometry. In, you find it in nature, and, of course, you find it in architecture like this. So um, you, you get some geometry like this, um, opposing patterns. These um, rectangles, they're slight rectangles, seem to be going this way, and these are going or more diagonally, I guess. So it's a really nice, uh, you know, study. And if you could add in some variants of color, that even makes it a little better. And we got some cloud reflections here, and this reflection over here of whatever, you know, stairway it looks like. I don't know, but it's very, very well done. It's a fantastic shot. Um, I am currently um, writing a landscape book and a macro book, and in the macro book, I'm going to cover how to do this. And this is just, you know, really, really nice shot. And I want everyone to notice how perfectly uh, in focus it is. It's just very well done. It's 1 250th of a second F9 ISO 200, 70 millimeters. I, you know, assume it was a macro lens. Um, either way, it's, it's an awesome shot. Very well done, Dirk. And I hope everyone, I hope this inspires you to try some different things. This here, I got it zoomed out. There it is. One thing I noticed about Dirk's work it's kind of grabs you it's like he's he fills the frame usually you know it's it's very aggressive uh, let's use that term it's very aggressive and in this shot here he he has a very close tight shot of the young lady and then the um, toning is is just flatters her very well you know her blonde hair and this kind of glow going around her face and it's awesome very, very nicely done. It's 1 1 25th of a second F13 ISO 100, 46 millimeters. Now, 46 millimeters, usually you don't want to use for a portrait lens or a portrait shot because it tends to distort a little bit. Now, I imagine he probably shot this on a crop sensor camera or he cropped it, I don't know. But if it was a crop sensor camera, then that um, 46, depending on the brand of camera, is going to be you know closer to you know 70 millimeters so that's a t you know closer to a portrait lens but it's very well done and the other thing I want to point out notice the little sparkle in her eye you always want that glow in her eye uh, try to get the light so you get that um, catch light in the subject's eyes that makes them look alive and vi vivacious without it she would just look dead it wouldn't look right the picture would look dead I should say so it's it's very nicely done and I just want to go back for a minute see what I mean like how this fills the frame and it grabs you like there's an action of this um, droplet you know splashing out from the water and even this the patterns are so aggressive it grabs you and this one here it just is right there and grabs you and I like that this is a really interesting style and I really I would challenge everyone go out next time you go out shooting 
try to do stuff like this. Now this might not be your style. You might not end up doing this. But it's a good exercise. You learn a little more how your camera works and how it focuses and things like that. And you'll get um, an idea of what your style really is. You might stumble into it. You might take a shot like this and then you know take another one where you're lower shooting up or something like that and then that becomes your style. So really um, try different things and and um, I really really do like a Dirk style. I know I'm gonna try some shots like this uh, because my portfolio lacks anything like this. Now this is such a great idea. Um, a lot of us who do macro we take pictures of forks and spoons and things like that and this is a really really nice shot. As you can see there's a fork here and I believe this is a spoon right here laying on top of it and the, it's probably um, some type of paper towel or something similar and the light is shooting up and it's just just again patterns that come out and grab you um, just we have this kind of relatively complex uh, complex pattern that is due to the um, bottom I'll call it paper towel in case it isn't it's something but it, coming from that and then we have um, the shapes of the fork uh, down here and the reflection in the spoon. It, it's just a really, really great shot. Again, as you look at it too, it just jumps out at you. This shot here, I looked at it and looked at it, and obviously it's like, um, you know, a, a you know a very long exposure. It was 15 seconds at f9, and for the life of me, I can't really exactly determine what this is. It kind of looks like an airplane. I know you guys, a lot of you guys are probably looking at it and go, you know exactly what it is. But it's pretty cool. There's, you can see right here, it looks like um, there's, you know, a statue, a person. I don't know. I'm making a fool of myself because I don't know what that is. But it's really a really cool shot. Something different. Why not, why just photograph this straight on, broadside, like everyone else? Um, really, you know, took a really unique idea. Let's try a real long exposure. Obviously this thing moves, whatever it does, so it came out really cool. Very nice shot, Dirk. Okay, I paused the video for a minute, and not surprisingly because I had to cough, but because my son walked in the house, and one of my sons walked in the house, and I just paused it for a second. But I call these shots the obligatory sunset photo, and um, it's we're photographers. We take sunset photos. That's what we do, and uh, this is just a really nice shot. Now, in this one, I could critique a little bit. I think that we really need something more in the foreground here. We do have an in interesting wave and this kind of secondary wave and some nice glow from the sun, and Dirk did a really nice job of controlling any lens flare, and you know, in that regard, it's very nice. I think it might have been stronger. I can't say for sure if this boat was right there. Uh, it gives you a kind of, it's a leading line, so it gives you something to look through as you're going up. Now, I'm not sure. I don't know. It's one of those things where you just stay there and keep taking pictures. You take this shot. You take the shot with the boat here. You take a shot with the boat here. You take a shot over You know, you just keep taking them and see which one's the best. But um, very, you know, it's very well done, very well processed. I love the colors and um, the clouds are very nice. So it's a very nice shot. I just think that it needs either a foreground element or a midground element, something that you're leading your eye to. Now, of course, it's leading us to the sun, but I think there's something else in there would be um, make it a stronger shot. Now, you know, there are people in the water here. So, you know, you got some people, but still they're so small, it really doesn't. Um, it's not something that you would make the main subject of the shot. This is a really nice shot. Again, work in the scene. You know, take some of whatever this is far away. Get up real close. What impresses me about this, I'm wondering if uh, Dirk sees this, if he could leave a comment. I'm wondering what kind of camera he's using. Uh, um, this is ISO 2000, and um, the noise is very well contained. Uh, very nice job. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it's some type of Canon camera. But it, it's very nicely done um, as far as you know the co composition and the noise, uh, keeping it under control. So it's real nice. One one hundredth of a second. Excuse me, one second. Oh my gosh, how rude was that? Okay, one one hundredth of a second. F of fourteen ISO two thousand, as I mentioned, one hundred and five millimeters. I'm pretty sure that's a macro lens. But again, work the scene. Maybe you took some further away. Um, throw on the macro lens. Get close. Take some. Um, some shots like this and we could see kind of the the rust and the the wear on whatever this is looks like a bell here obviously but some more bells over here I guess so of course I don't know what it is but that's part of the deal 
you got me looking at it and it looks interesting and I just want to know what it is so it's a pretty cool shot this is fantastic uh, this is a great shot um, I've seen actually this done before um, it's kind of a Photoshop trick that that you learn to do when you're learning how to do um, layers and blending and um, you know mask masking and things like that and it's just a really really good shot and it's I love the execution and I love the processing um, did a great job so two you not only do you take you know take pictures out in the field but you know get a little studio in your house and set something up and do some some different type of things like this and this is a pretty cool shot um, I think everyone would agree and maybe some people it creeps you out a little bit but it's a very very nice shot Dirk this one too this is a variation on the selective color um, you know we see selective color all the time I mean I got real mundane selective color you know a colorful leaf on, against a black grating and you've seen some of my stuff I mean you know pales in comparison to the imagination that Dirk used to create this shot so um, sit there um, you know if you're interested in selective color maybe um, I what I would suggest is look for it in when you're out and about look for ideas and get um, you know if you're out on a scene you know here at the botanical gardens it's easy to do selective color you know you got a colorful flower against something or whatever but um, in other uh, situations where you no, won't necessarily use selective color maybe a tennis court you know just a yellow tennis ball or, or something like that you know uh, go through all your old photographs you probably inadvertently photograph something that would be an excellent choice for selective color and you could do something with those now in this case obviously Dirk thought of this idea and he did this you know created this so you could you know if you're a very creative uh, thinker and you could think of something like this I mean that's go for it I think it's a really really cool shot and I think that's it for Dirk and I'm very thankful that my voice held up and I'd like to apologize to Dirk for going so quickly because I was afraid I'd start coughing and uh, thank you Dirk and I appreciate you waiting everyone's been waiting well over a month now for the critiques and um, I apologize I'm trying to do them as quick as possible but I've been very very busy with life and uh, sometimes life you know gets in the way but we're gonna get caught up we're gonna well at least get doing them a little quicker and I appreciate everyone's patience I appreciate everyone who watches my videos I really do appreciate it thank you very much if you have time go over to my website anthonymorganti.com I got videos and articles over there on photography you check that out and after you do that maybe go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel I'd really appreciate that so that's it for episode 94 I'll talk to you guys soon